Confirmation hearings started today for Judge Ketenji Brown Jackson, nominated for the Supreme Court. Now, uh, as I was watching, I noticed how polite, how civil everyone seemed to be. Deferential, extremely deferential. And I thought back to a little over three years ago. Judge Kavanaugh, remember what happened there? This is even before uh, Christine Blasey Ford showed up. He was two minutes in to his opening statement and all hell broke loose. The effective discharge of his duties depends. And the quote, Kagan's, this is another example of we're really interested in seeing them in the first place. But indeed, to protect individual liberty, the framers. So you see what's going on. It's righteous and good for liberals to protest conservatives by any means necessary. But when it's the other way around, no, no, it's not going to happen. Now, Judge Kavanaugh, uh, notice anything about him? He happens to be a, well, he happens to be a white male. You notice anything about Judge Jackson? She happens to be a black female, the first ever nominated to the Supreme Court. Uh, race is a major, major factor here in how folks are treated in politics and it seems like everywhere these days. Now, Josh Hawley, Senator from uh, Missouri raised some significant questions about Judge Jackson's record last week. Look at what they did to him. Even Republican media, Senator Hawley's disingenuous attack against Judge Jackson's record on child pornography. Uh, the liberal Vox went further. Josh, Josh Hawley's attack uh, is genuinely nauseating. Okay. And Yahoo News, uh, a filthy attack, filthy attack on Judge Ketenji Brown Jackson, a hint at how low Republicans may go during her confirmation hearings. Um, now, what this is about, uh, I fear, is that Josh Hawley is a white man being critical of a black woman. And in today's society, you just can't do that, according to the left. Even people on the left who happen to be white say that. I'm asking for trouble here, because <laughs> here I am, an old, old white guy talking about race relations. This is what I'm saying to you. Why the rage, bruh? You, you, you're doing well, but you're a mean, mad white man. I think I'm just embarrassed as a white person. We must not be cowed by the terror unleashed by white men drowning in the deep end of racism, xenophobia, and misogyny. I'm an old white guy, and I love Barack Obama. You can save me white men's tears. I don't need to hear that. We don't realize sometimes, especially as a white person, how impactful, how offensive they are. I just know gray-haired white guy in a suit, you know, <laughs> fairly boring. Right. Nothing more boring, insensitive, dumb than being a white man, and nothing greater than being a black woman, according to... Well, just about everybody on television. Seeing this woman, this beautiful, dynamic black woman on that show and just thinking anything was possible. She's clearly one of the most powerful black women on the planet. What I've known are powerful black women who've given me a sense of self-worth, a sense of dignity. Thank Rest you. Rest in heaven. Thank you, beautiful black woman. I love you. Thank you. Love you take love care. You. Thanks for representing. Now, I don't think normal people, uh, black or white, think or talk like this. Television sometimes brings out the worst in people. Um, back to Kentenji Brown Jackson, uh, I think she's perfectly nice and she's probably really, really smart. And she said some powerful things that I am, I'm an admirer of hers. I must begin these very brief remarks by thanking God for delivering me to this point in my professional journey. My life has been blessed beyond measure, and I do know that one can only come this far by faith. That's beautiful. Amen to that. That doesn't mean uh, those senators have to vote for her. Admirable person. Her views, her it may be totally wrong for the Supreme Court. We got to go through the record, and those People down there, Republicans in particular, can't be afraid because they don't like the optics. The optics. 
how things look. What about the substance, okay? And on the substance, there are some serious questions that they ought to get to the bottom of. Soft on crime, a record of leniency against child sex offenders, and she supported the godfather of critical race theory, Derek Bell. Uh, this guy who expressed um, admiration for Louis Farrakhan, known anti-Semite and bigot. I think Louis Farrakhan is a great hero for the people. I don't agree with everything he says and some of his tactics, but hell, I don't agree with everything anybody did. Called him a hero. That's a problem. That's a problem. They should pursue it aggressively. Now, Judge Jackson, not very long ago, said this man well, was a fixture in her home. Professor Derek Bell wrote a book in the early 1990s about the persistence of racism in American life that he entitled Faces at the Bottom of the Well. My parents had this book on their coffee table for many, many years. Republicans, you are allowed to go there. You have to, and if you can't, resign from the committee. There are plenty of people like Josh Hawley. Let him take over. And by the way, just because she went to a fancy law school doesn't mean much at all. Somehow they think that gives her a free pass. It didn't give Judge Kavanaugh a free pass. He went to Yale. Take a look. Put aside all the politics and the nonsense and just get back down to the qualifications of this nominee. Number one, graduating from Harvard twice with honors. Number two, nine years as a federal judge. Number three, private sector practice, public service. All of it's there. Yeah, like those are the credentials you need to even be considered um, qualified for the court. I mean, like they'll even look at your resume. You got to go to those schools. You got to have those kinds of jobs. Now what? Now what? Then you start asking the real questions. And it looks like there's some indication that Republicans, especially the men, are not going to go there. Marsha Blackburn, Republican of Tennessee, they're going to put it all on her. Why? Because she's a woman and they think it'll be easier for her. I just can't stand this... Uh, this kind of thinking, and quite frankly, it's in a weird way biased and prejudiced against Judge Jackson, as if she can't handle tough questions from white senators. I mean, what the heck is that all about? What kind of mindset is that? I noticed Kamala Harris, she has some pretty tough pointed questions of uh, Judge Kavanaugh. Nobody seemed to have a problem with that. So something to keep in mind. Now, remember Christine Blasey Ford? Remember this uh, ridiculous scene that the whole country was subjected to for about a week? I am here today not because I want to be. I am terrified. I am here because I believe it is my civic duty to tell you what happened to me while Brett Kavanaugh and I were in high school. I believed he was going to rape me. I tried to yell for help. When I did, Brett put his hand over my mouth to stop me from yelling. I thought it was my civic duty to relay the information I had about Mr. Kavanaugh's conduct so that those considering his nomination would know about this assault. The story had holes you could drive an aircraft carrier through, a fleet of them. Yet Republicans, ooh, they tiptoed around because of the optics. In fact, not one of them had the guts to challenge her. They turned it over. Do you remember that they had somebody else do it? Watch. With that, uh, uh, Ms. Mitchell, uh, you have my five minutes to ask questions. Ms. Mitchell for Senator Graham. It is uh, Senator Cornyn's time, so proceed, Ms. Mitchell. Ms. Uh, Mitchell for, Sen for Senator uh, Hatch. Now, who's this Miss Mitchell? She's not on the committee. She's not a senator. She's some local prosecutor from Arizona that they hired. They flew her in so that she could ask the questions because they were afraid of the optics of how it would look, those men asking her a question. Now they're afraid of the optics. How will look these men asking uh, Judge Jackson questions? Go for it, okay? She can take it. And if she can't, she doesn't belong on the Supreme Court. Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, and if things aren't perfectly civil, it won't be the end of the world. Relax, fellas. Let me be clear. We will not tolerate any disruptions from the audience. Any disruption will result in immediate removal. We won't try to turn this into a spectacle based upon alleged process fouls. 
It won't be a circus. We're off to a good start. As I told you the other, the other day, these proceedings will be thorough but civil. I am dedicated, as I always have been, to making sure that these hearings are respectful. This will not be a political circus. That's nice, but the commitment to not having a political circus always seems to really take effect when Democrats are the nominees and Republicans, well, hang in there. That's democracy at work. It's not always pretty, but mm, yeah, that's freedom of expression. No, it's unfair and it's biased. Thank you.